Ladies and gentlemen, what a treat we have in store on the Sports Report, the number one global sports show on Sportinarian. We get to have on not only our first ever ring announcer, but we also have some breaking news involving Odyssey Pro Wrestling. Because to kick off today's show, we now have on the general manager for Odyssey Pro Wrestling. It's literally just breaking. And that's Ethan Edwards. And Ethan Edwards is a man that has quite a background when it comes to professional wrestling here in the UK. He has been a ring announcer for a who's who of places, including AOW, KOW, where he was also a general manager, the LWF, TW. He is one of the best in the business when it comes to ring announcing. Howard Finkel, Tony Schimmel, David Penzer, move on over because Ethan Edwards has come your way and he's taken over. And ladies and gentlemen, without further ado here on the Sports Report, the number one global sports show, our number one ring announcer, and now the general manager for OP Dub, OP up, OP up, Odyssey Pro Wrestling, and that's Ethan. My friend, how are you? Wow, what an introduction! I mean, saying I'm going to bring an answer, Christ, you'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, you have been a ring announcer for quite a while, my friend. And I've watched you, obviously, from many of the clips of some of the wrestlers that we've had on the show here over the past several weeks. And I'm sure we're going to talk about quite a number of them here over the time with you. So we knew that we had to try to live up to those expectations because you're somebody that's done this many, many times over the past few years. So we're originally going to say Tony Schiavone, Bobby the Brain Heenan. We are going to say Michael Cole, Jay. They are, but then we thought about it. Well, he's actually a ring announcer, so we're not going to say broadcaster because he's a ring announcer. But obviously, Ethan, it's a tremendous honor to have you here. And obviously, I cannot thank you enough for the opportunity on behalf of all the many listeners here on Sportinarium and as well as the Sports Report. But congratulations to you because obviously, we just broke it here in introducing you in that you're now the general manager for Odyssey Pro Wrestling. And for a worldwide audience here on Sportinarium, what does it mean to you? you now to be the general manager for odyssey pro wrestling i mean it means absolutely everything odyssey pro wrestling is going to be something special i truly truly believe it's going to be something special and that's in no small part to the morgan crowd are an absolute nutty bunch but they're the best fans in the world they really are talking quite a bit about the crowd and the atmosphere in morgan and we've compared it to what it's like here in New York, in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, in the Northeast for the wrestling scene that we've had here, most mm. notably ECW, which was born here in the Northeast, and Ring of Honor, which for the most part has made its base here in the Northeast area. But for a worldwide audience, as somebody that grew up in Morkham, you have a firsthand knowledge of what this wrestling scene has been like for many, many years. Talk about the wrestling scene here in Morecambe and what's it like? So, yeah, Morecambe has an incredibly rich history from back in the days of World of Sport and the, the, the British wrestlers that everybody talks about, you know, Big Daddy and Giant Haystacks appearing all the way. I mean, Daniel Bryan appeared in Morecambe at one point and just in absolute craziness, you know. Morecambe's just that place where it's still real to the Morecambe fans. They invest, they believe, and that's why you do this. You know, you, you, if you go out there and to dead silence, then you're not doing a great job. But Morecambe just makes it so much easier. You know, they invest, they care, they absolutely cheer and beloved the good guys and they despise the bad guys. And it's everything <laughs> you could want in the wrestling industry. How much does this motivate you in addition to the fact that you're the general manager now for Odyssey Pro Wrestling? I'm going to talk quite a bit about this, I'm sure. But how much does it motivate you in addition to the fact that you're now the general manager from Odyssey Pro Wrestling? But Odyssey Pro Wrestling is going to be based here at Amorcom, and you're from here. You know this wrestling scene. How much does this motivate you? Oh, incredibly so, because it's not just... 
the Morecambe audience. It's not just the fans that are there, but it's also, you know, my family and my friends and that makes it a bit different. It really does. You know, I'm, I'm so incredibly proud of Morecambe, just the, the place it's becoming, you know, over the, the past couple of years, like we're starting to get TV companies that just realize what a glorious place it is and use it in the basis of, of some TV shows. I mean, Netflix is there producing a TV show at the moment. It's an incredible place. And that really drives me to want to make Odyssey Pro Wrestling the absolute best thing in the world. And we know that you are definitely going to do that. And I feel the momentum. I feel the energy here over the past several weeks and talking with all of you guys. And I'm sure everybody can't wait to get back in the ring later this year. But when it comes down to it, you've also been a ring announcer. I mean, how different is this role from being, let's say, a backstage interviewer and a ring announcer? So to be the general manager, it's, you know, the, the first line of, of call for the wrestlers. If they're not happy about something, you're going to hear about it. If they want something, they're going to come find you. Whereas being that ring announcer, you're always, uh, well, for a backstage interview, for example, I was always in the firing line. Um, <laughs> you know, I've been attacked backstage. I've been tennis against the wall um, in, in rage. I've been, you know, knocked down and all in just chasing that story. You just want to craft that right story to, to get over to the, to the fans. They want to know what's happened and um, what those guys are thinking after a match. And it was my job to get in there and, and find out what was going on um, to the detriment of my own health. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need you, my friend. We need you to be safe and sound because we have a lot to look forward to here when it comes to Odyssey Pro Wrestling. And we have a pretty stacked roster here. And there are names I'm sure that we're going to talk mm. about over the next coming weeks that haven't been announced. And many of the other wrestlers that have been announced, we've obviously had the honor to have them on the show. But I was curious about this also for a worldwide audience here on Sportinary and listening. How hard is it to be, let's say, impartial? Because there's a number of these wrestlers. I mean, I got to tell you, Ethan, I like them all here at Odyssey Pro Wrestling. I mean, listen, whether it's the guiding light, Isaiah Quinn, whether it's Energy, whether it's RP Davis, of course, we love RPD on this show. Rick Marcus, I mean, there's so many people that we haven't even had on the show yet that I honestly say I love them all here at Odyssey. So I was curious then, now that you're the general manager, how hard is it to be impartial? I'm not going to lie and say that it's not going to be difficult because it really is. You know, I've got history with certain roster members, you know, myself and two bit of cross paths before, for example. However, there's no mistake in, you know, we want the best and these people are are the best that they're going to put on the best show. And that's the thing that we care about the most. Are there people that I want to see succeed? Yeah, but it's it's up to me to kind of make sure everything just runs smoothly and we put on the best show possible. It's something interesting and you want to put on the best show possible. And that first show, we are going to be ready to set sail very much sooner rather than later. How much pressure do you feel now in this position to put on that first show and be as successful as it can be? And especially now in your role, because it's one thing if you're just a ring announcer. It's one thing if you're just a backstage mm -hmm. interviewer. Or it's even another thing if you're a wrestler. But now your role in some ways is more important than being in any of those roles. I mean, how important do you think that it is to have the first show set sail to be as successful as possible? I mean, the first show sets the tone more than absolutely anything. So whatever happens in that first show is going to have lasting effects going forward. So we need that first show to go off with a bang, to bring those people in and to bring them back in the future. You know, I want people leaving that first show going, did you see what happened at Odyssey? Were you there? And then when people hear about what's happened, make them have to come to the next show. You know, it's going to be the place to be. It's going to be the show that you can't miss. And that first show sets that tone. And it's sort of so important to hit the ground running. Ladies and gentlemen, these are a few of the reasons why we are ready to set sail. And we're very excited 
excited about Odyssey Pro Wrestling, and I couldn't think of a better way to continue to talk about the many great things that Odyssey Pro Wrestling has and is going to have to offer is with our guest here on the Sports Report, the number one global sports show to kick things off here today, and that is Ethan Edwards, who has now been announced here on the show, an exclusive, our first ever exclusive, who is now the general manager for Odyssey Pro Wrestling, so we are very excited about that, as I am the host of the Sports Report, the Reverend Tom Bryson, where we're talking all things related to Odyssey Pro Wrestling with the general manager of Odyssey Pro Wrestling, that is Ethan Edwards, whose background is as good as anybody's when it comes to the wrestling business, especially as a ring announcer for a who's who of wrestling promotions across the UK. And we're excited to be here back on Sport and Airing, the number one global radio station where we're talking all things related to Odyssey Pro Wrestling. And Ethan, I got to ask you then also for a worldwide audience here on Sport and Airing, what are the goals then for Odyssey Pro Wrestling? The goal is to put butts in seats more than absolutely anything. <laughs> um, you know, that's, that's, that's the number one goal. I think the other goal is is just to tell the best stories as well. We don't want people coming in and just sort of going, oh, well, you know, that was a good match, but uh, nothing really happened. You know, everything needs to be about the story. And that's what Morecambe's so good at. You know, historically, Morecambe has been that place. I've been in, in Morecambe and I've seen two people have the best technical wrestling match they could possibly have to, to crickets. And I've also been in Morecambe and I've seen people have maybe not the best quality of match but they've told the best story and that's where people get invested you said something interesting and i want to ask and get your perspective on this as somebody who's grown up in Morecambe and has seen a lot of wrestling over time whereas take for example in japan japan wrestling is taken very seriously and the crowds that you see whether it's for new japan pro wrestling or all japan or the iwgp you see that wrestling fan there is much different than the U.S. fan here for WWE and AEW and TNA slash Impact, where you almost have to have the fan kind of immersed. You have to tell that story. I was curious on how the Morecambe wrestling fan is maybe different versus the U.S. wrestling fan or the Japan wrestling fan. So, I mean, Japan is, from what I've seen, is very much there. They sit in the audience and they'll watch, you know, very respectfully, in which that works for them. America, it seems to be a bit more, you know, a bit more loud, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all about like voicing your opinion. Whereas, in the thing that, that sort of sets Morecambe, Morecambe apart is they invest in the people, they care about the people. So, you know, whereas sometimes it's just, oh, let's, you know, make some noise for this, Morecambe will not make the noise for you if you haven't earned it and i think that's what makes what makes them different is when you get them on side you know i've I, i've seen guys that have been that have taken one hell of a kick in and then i've spoken to them the next day and they've just said oh, i've made my you know I've, I've just had messages from fans just sort of checking how i am and to know i'm all right but then i've spoken to guys that have delivered the kick in that you know they've come to me and said look you know all i'm getting is these people just tell me how horrible a person i am <laughs> um, and I, I truly think that's what makes them different because it, they're just so invested in, in you know in the spectacle in the but in the people they care about the people and i think that's what makes it different absolutely and i think I think that's why again to me it's very similar to the old ecw fan or maybe even now to the ring of honor fan here where it was something different and i've always felt that obviously being from new york as you can tell from my accent and obviously talking with a number of the different guys in odyssey pro wrestling that the new york wrestling fan in a lot of ways i've always felt has been different than some of the other places across the country here because wrestling to me has always been taken i think a lot differently than some other places so I think that Morecambe is right up there with the New York wrestling fan or certainly with the wrestling fan in Japan or even in places like Mexico. And these are definitely reasons why we're very excited about the future of Odyssey Pro Wrestling. And now I got to ask you about a number of our different wrestlers that we've had on the show here that we know are going to be with Odyssey Pro Wrestling. And one of those wrestlers you just mentioned a few minutes ago, and that was somebody we had on two weeks ago. And that is the main event. And that is 
two bit and two bit. I know you and him. I mean, I've watched some of those interviews and those spots that you and two bit have had. I mean, he's somebody that I think you're going to be watching very closely here. And he's definitely put himself in a position where he's going to be a main event in the near and distant future. I'm sure with Odyssey Pro Wrestling, he's going to be in many main events and for a worldwide audience here on Sportinarium. I mean, you've seen him up close. You've known him very well. You've had, I'm sure many incidents with the main event with the gangster war the king of chavs i mean talk about two bit for a worldwide audience here on sportinary so me and two bit i remember interviewing two bit the first time he showed up in morkham and he was just this cocky brash kid that i've seen evolve into a very tough very scary person very scary man um, <laughs> So uh, a little bit of background is I did a little bit of training with KOW at their academy, which is where 2Bit is from. So we've crossed paths there. I crossed paths with him during my time as the general manager of KOW. And he's crazy. <laughs> that's the only, <laughs> only way I can say it. Like, but that's a good thing for him. You know, he's found his place and he knows what he wants and he's determined to get there and he's going to use that passion and that drive to get there. I've been on the receiving end of that, you know, and <laughs> he'll do whatever it takes. And you know what? As a viewer, to watch him go, it's absolutely incredible. He's one of the very best I've seen. In there with him, it hurts. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that's most impressive to me about 2Bit is that he's still relatively so young and he's younger than a number mm. of the different guys on the roster. And yet he's done so much so far in such a short amount of time. He's been a showcase winner. He's been a cruiserweight champion in another promotion. I mean, he's somebody that in such a short amount of time, in a way reminds me of almost like a younger Jeff Hardy or a Shawn Michaels where he's going to get himself into a main event almost every time he's out there. And if he's not in the main event, he's going to steal the show. And I think that that's what's to me most impressive and stands out about 2Bit. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, he, for his age, like you almost forget about his age when you're watching him go. Like he stands toe to toe with, with those people. And then when you remember his age, it makes you hate him even more. Like, because how can someone be so good <laughs> at that age? Like it's, ah, it's the worst. He has the talent and he has the ability to take this as far as he wants to take it whether he's got the attitude that's a different story you know that's i think that's what's held him back to this point is you know and i can only speak for my time as managing him in kow his attitude is what holds him back but if he had the right attitude to go alongside you know all the talent that he has man he could be odyssey pro wrestling champion in absolutely no time at all Listen, ladies and gentlemen, 2Bit is a name you better keep an eye on for years and years to come because we said it on this show. He's the kind of guy that you could see in an NXT UK or in another promotion because there's something about him. I watched quite a few of his matches over the past several weeks, and he's somebody that can go in the ring. He's well-spoken. His promos are ahead of the curve. They're very ECW-like. We even talked about that in terms of the NWO comparison with his promo so two bit knows how to market himself but most importantly he's great in the ring and mm. he's somebody that you'd want to pay a lot of money to see anytime with anybody in the ring because he can go and a team that we had on the show also not too long ago who we've been very excited about and in a lot of ways we almost compared them to the steiner brothers because i actually had to bring out my wcw steiner brothers wrestling card because that's who i compare them to and we're we're talking about obviously the team of synergy and that's anderson and bartum the strong man the superman and for our worldwide audience here on sport and area what can we expect from synergy here in odyssey pro wrestling synergy that breed of strength and speed that is absolutely scary but absolutely fascinating to watch they truly are super athletes i was very lucky to get to work with synergy during my time in the lwf out of you know the lancashire wrestling federation that's where i i came aware of them and it was just so incredible to watch they look incredible you stand them next to a normal person and they look like two of them in the best way possible 
you know <laughs> they they have charisma for days like i could just sit here and watch the videos that they put out of just those guys clowning around and to me that's oh, it's some of the funniest stuff i've ever seen <laughs> and then watching them in the ring you know they're next level they model themselves after the right people for what they are you get some guys you know that are quite small guys that want to be big powerhouses and you get some big guys that want to be you know the cruiserweight type guys but these guys know what they are and they know they're going to be huge and the fact that we managed to get them before they've broken out and i mean that they were on the cusp of breaking out so the fact that we managed to get them when we did you know makes the happiest i can be about that because they are truly going to take the tag team division in obviously to a whole nother level before it's even begun absolutely no question about it and you look at them and they're straight out of central casting in terms of their image their looks but most importantly how they move in the ring they've definitely got it all and in baseball they use the term five tool player and there's no question to me that Anderson and Bartum are five tool players when it comes to the Odyssey Pro Wrestling and we fully expect them to dominate the tag team wrestling scene here in Odyssey Pro Wrestling and you know we got to mention him here and obviously he has done a lot in pro wrestling he's been a world champion he has really been the guy that has been the anchor I think for Odyssey Pro Wrestling and I want to give him a huge thanks and I cannot thank him enough for the opportunity most importantly for giving us this platform to talk with all of the different wrestlers here in Odyssey Pro Wrestling and along with yourself and that's the Cumberian outlaw Rick Marcus who again I mean if you look at Rick Marcus here during the pandemic he has transformed himself and he was a great wrestler prior to the pandemic but I think 2021 especially for the Cumberian outlaw is going to be a big year because he's in shape where you look at him and he's a different person I can't wait to see him in the ring but you've known him now for a while you've seen him up close you've seen him dominate in KOW you've seen him as a world champion you've seen him in a lot of big matches but what can we expect from the Cumbrian outlaw Rick Marcus in Odyssey Pro Wrestling so Rick is a guy that he's tough. That's the thing about Rick. He is a very tough man. And that was before he got himself into the best shape of his life. You know, he looks absolutely incredible, but he's got it all to back him up. Before he had that sort of, you know, people might underestimate him a little bit, but he could just keep going, you know, whereas now there's no underestimating him. He's so smooth in the ring as well. He can just go. And it's very rare that you get a man that looks that tough, that's that good in a wrestling ring. He's been a thorn in my side before so when he's angry you can, <laughs> you're gonna hear about it you know he's <laughs> his temper can get the better of him and i've seen that happen but you know what when his head's in the right place and he's focused on something there's no stopping him and the way he's leveled up it's so fascinating to see he's really gonna change the he could change a situation like that and you know that his choosing and i think that's it's an incredible place to be not to compare, but in a lot of ways, I see Rick very similar to how Drew McIntyre transformed himself after he was released in the WWE and then he went to TNA. And all of a sudden, he looked at Drew McIntyre mm. and he was a totally different guy. And then he came back in here to the WWE a few years ago and we see where he is now and you would never have thought about that. And Rick was a world champion. Rick was in great shape, obviously. But now I just feel like Rick mm has raised the bar and some. So I really think that Rick is on the cusp of like major things here because of just what he's done for himself. And like I said before, we've had the honor to speak with Rick. Rick has been in a lot of big matches. He's been a champion. I mean, he's somebody that we know obviously is going to be at the top here when it comes to Odyssey Pro Wrestling. But Ethan, I just feel just for whatever reason, the way I've seen Rick Marcus transform himself it's very similar to how drew mcintyre transformed himself after he was released from the wwe i think the difference is when drew got released he was very much left to cast adrift and and he built himself up again and did his own thing with rick rick was a he's a fan favorite in morkham they love him you know before we we got to announce him every time we would tease that someone was going to be announced it would be oh is it, is it rick is it rick you know he's coming back <laughs> 
And it just goes to show, like, he's got that, he had that support and he had that momentum beforehand. So now that he's, as I said before, now that he's leveled himself up, like, he's in control of how far that goes. And that, you know, that's an incredible place to be. Absolutely. Listen, you think about where Rick Marcus was and Rick Marcus is now. I mean, listen, 2021 is going to be a huge year for him. And I know he's listening, so I got to do it one more time. So I wanted to do that just for you, Rick, my friend. Obviously, cannot thank you enough for all the support and friendship that you've given us here on the show over the past several weeks. So I wanted to make sure we did that just for you. And then I got to bring him up because he has been the talk of all the social media over the past several days. And he is somebody that I think we're going to pay very closely attention to over these next several months, I am sure, with Odyssey Pro Wrestling. And that is the guiding light, Isaiah Quinn and the world. Word of Isaiah. He has definitely become one of my favorites. I think his all-time guest here on the Sports Report. There is something about the guiding light Isaiah Quinn that I have a feeling he's going to do some major things here for Odyssey Pro Wrestling. But talk about also last week's guest, the guiding light Isaiah Quinn. So it's going back to what we were sort of talking about earlier with that, how hard is it to be impartial? I know now, before we get started, that Isaiah Quinn is going to be difficult in Markham. He is going to be, he's going to look for his following. He's going to look for he's going to look to spread the word of Isaiah and that's that's absolutely <laughs> fine you know the reason we're bringing the reason we're bringing Isaiah Quinn into Morecambe is for his mind like he has one of the best minds for this that I've ever seen he knows I mean uh, I suppose any any cult leader is, is great at marketing <laughs> themselves um <laughs> You know, that's exactly what he's doing. He's looking to build his following. And I know he's going to try and do that in Morecambe, but you know what? That's what's going to make it more compelling. Again, he's another guy that's used this lockdown time to, to make himself look incredible. So the fact that he's got that mind, combine that with the new weapons that he's given himself, that's going to make him really dangerous. And as a viewer, as a fan, that just makes me really excited. Absolutely. And we're just as excited to hear more from the guiding light and the word of Isaiah. But it was something that we talked about quite a bit with him. And I'm sure that you're familiar with it in terms of ring psychology. And one of the things that I think the guiding light Isaiah Quinn does very well versus any other wrestler out there is he understands how to work a crowd. He understands how to get a fan reaction. You watch wrestling, I'm sure, different different than most. How important is that ring psychology? How important is that trait you think that the guiding light brings here to the Odyssey pro wrestling roster? So the thing about having that psychology and that sort of mindset is it's you can outsmart your opponent. You can tie them up in knots without having to touch them. You can do so much with so little. That's the qualities that he brings. I once saw in, in <laughs> so in my time in TWA, I got to work with Isaiah Quinn and I saw him kidnap an invisible horse. <laughs> that's, that's you know that kind of psychology it's it that next level you know he knew what he was doing you know i mean i i couldn't even see the invisible horse for him to actually put his, put his hands on it and kidnap it that's something else you know so for him to to have that ability that's what makes him dangerous it sounds absurdly and absurd but if you think down to it he's taken some you know he's kidnapped someone's partner so to speak you know, and he's put them in a difficult position. Imagine what he'll do in Morecambe. Imagine what he'll do when he's focusing his entire mindset on someone. Like, it's difficult to say what he'll do because he's so unpredictable. I think that's why I'm struggling to sort of talk about this so much is because he's, he's fully in control. He's already thought three steps ahead. <laughs> oh, I got a feeling, my friend, it's more like four and five steps ahead with the guiding light, Isaiah Quinn. So we want to make sure that we recognize him and give him a huge shout out and in a lot of ways his ring psychology to me it reminds me a little bit of Roddy Piper and Chris Jericho in some senses even mm. now in MJF where they really know how to get the crowd worked up everybody needs to pay mm. attention to him because he's somebody like you said I watched a match with him where he didn't even come out for almost three minutes after they announced him where he didn't even go into the ring literally and he had that crowd in the palm of his hand 
So that shows you what mm. he can do in terms of his ring psychology and how much he understands how to work a crowd. And most importantly, he does a great job of promoting himself because the Guiding Light TV has some of the best videos out there that anybody can find. And you definitely want to do that on YouTube and of course on his Twitter and Instagram at Guiding Light IQ. So I want to make sure we give him a huge shout out, but we got to bring him up. I wouldn't necessarily say he's last or he's the best for last, but he's definitely become one of our favorites. He's also been a guest here on Sportinarium with the Spartans Boxing Show with Lakey and Arv. And we've had him on the show twice and we've done a number of clips with him on social media. And you know we're talking about RPD, RPD, RPD. And RP Davis, boxing champion turned wrestling star. And he is obviously one of the focal points of Odyssey Pro Wrestling. You know, we're always excited to talk about him. So I got to ask you then, my friend, and talk about R.P. Davis and what we can expect from your vantage point of R.P.D. and Odyssey Pro Wrestling. I mean, RPD is a guy that you can see he's got that X factor already. You know, he competed in 13 pro bouts. You know, some of the videos that I've watched of those fights, it's standing room only. You know, he's a guy that really brings that next level athlete to Odyssey Pro Wrestling. And it's something that I'm really excited to see. He's got an X factor and more than I'm more than sure are just going to absolutely love him. Oh, I think everybody loves RPD at this point. And then do you also feel like, in a way, because he's somebody that boxing fans know of? And obviously, we do a lot on Sportinarium here with boxers. And do you think that RPD brings in maybe some of that casual boxing fan or audience into this? Because he's somebody that in households know who he is. He was a champion in boxing. He was on his way to probably becoming a world champion and he's fought 13 times professionally fought nine times unlicensed so he's a name in the boxing world that is very well known in the uk do you think also one of the things that he brings to odyssey is that he has those casual boxing fans that may not be wrestling fans per se but if they see rpd in the ring they're gonna have to pay attention closely and maybe check it out i mean what's your thoughts on that absolutely he's a guy that commands attention and those boxing fans I'm sure are gonna you know oh what's he doing over there let's have a let's have a quick peek <laughs> and I mean Morecambe is it's a big town for boxing you may have heard of quite a famous boxer from Morecambe he's the current WBC world heavyweight champion Tyson Fury yep. um you know he enjoys the wrestling every now and then ladies and gentlemen I think that not only are we very excited about RPD RPD but the rest of the roster here on Odyssey Pro Wrestling Wrestling, including the main event, Two Bit, The Guiding Light, Isaiah Quinn, Synergy, and the Cumbrian Outlaw, Rick Marcus. But now we're just as excited to talk with here on the Sports Report, the number one global sports show, our general manager for OP Dub, OP Dub, OP Dub, Odyssey Pro Wrestling, and that's Ethan. In his first interview since he's become the general manager for Odyssey Pro Wrestling, as I am the host of the Sports Report, the Reverend Tom Bryson. For more information on the Sports Report, you can go to sportsreportx.com and to listen to all of our archives, you can go to soundcloud.com slash the Sports Report 2019 and subscribe now to our YouTube page at the Sports Report, the number one global sports show where you can see sports report related content from shows and all the great things that the show is doing. And as always, a huge shout out to the entire team here at Sportinarium, the number one global radio station that is Lakey, Arv, Sean, who does a great job with the YouTube page, Susie, Sasha, Steve, Martin, Connor, Dave, Dale, Mike Lipinski, our very good friend from the Section 247 show, who also does a phenomenal job with the recently added In the Fight show. So I want to make sure we acknowledge the entire team here at Sportinarium because we would not be here talking with the likes of Ethan Edwards, the general manager for Odyssey Pro Wrestling, if it was is not for Sportinarium. And you can follow Sportinarium on Twitter and Instagram at Sportinarium. You can like Sportinarium on Facebook at Sportinarium Media. And you can subscribe.
subscribe to the Sportinarium TV YouTube page at Sportinarium TV, where you can find a who's who of Odyssey Pro Wrestling stars that we've had here on the Sports Report, including the main event, Two Bit Rick Marcus, RPD. It's a who's who of people that we've interviewed, Synergy as well, that are on the Sportinarium TV YouTube page. So make sure everybody subscribes to the Sportinarium TV YouTube page at Sportinarium TV. And you can now listen to the Sports Report Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, now 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 to 12 UK Time. And you can do that at Sportinarium.com. So Sportinarium.com is when you can listen to the Sports Report Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 to 12 UK Time. And as always, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You can go to Sportinarium.com to listen to all of the great shows that we have here on Sportinarium. It is a long list, also including the Sunday Chill Out Show, which I actually recorded a promo for, Ethan, for our very good friend, Aidy. Want to make sure we acknowledge Aidy and all the great things that he is doing also as well. So, Sportinarium.com. Fridays to Sundays, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 to 12 UK Time, where, of course, you can also find, I'm sure, an Odyssey Pro Wrestling interview with the likes of our guest here on the Sports Report to kick off today's show. That is Ethan Edwards, who is now the general manager for Odyssey Pro Wrestling. So we are tremendously humbled and privileged to have the opportunity to speak with Ethan and all the great things that he is doing, and especially for Odyssey Pro Wrestling. And Ethan, I got to ask you then, after talking about all the great things that we know that Odyssey Pro Wrestling has to offer. I was curious on what got you into wrestling. So I've been a wrestling fan ever since I was a wee little kid. I remember having four wrestling VHS tapes. (laughs) Uh, No, five, sorry. Five wrestling VHS tapes. I had WrestleMania 1, 2, and 3. I had WrestleMania 6, which was the Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan. And then I had In Your House Mind Games 1996. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I just used to watch those time. on repeat all the time. Okay, yep. I remember yeah, that very yeah. well. I love that show. I mean, I think I remember rightly, Savio Vega wrestled two matches in the start of the show for some reason, and it was great. <laughs> 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 and so, you know, those sorts of things got me interested in wrestling. And then sort of growing up throughout, you know, watching the Attitude Era, I was, I was very much a WWF kid. I mean, I caught Nitro every now and then but my focus was fully on WWF and then growing up I, I would watch wrestling but I never really got involved with it it wasn't until I turned ooh, 25 that I thought you know what I love this I'd sort of fallen out of love a little bit with doing local theatre that I was doing at the time and I was looking for some sort of new challenge and I just thought well, why the hell have I hadn't I done anything why haven't I chased this up at all why haven't you know because I'm not the most athletic person I'll be the first to admit that but there are you know, so many other jobs within wrestling that's not being a wrestler so I sought out my local promotion, which was all Pro Omega Wrestling at the time in Morecambe, and I just got to work helping out. And for the first show or two, I was I was just a steward in the crowd. I was just, you know, helping out, taking jackets backstage, getting water for the wrestlers. And then I was just really, really lucky to get the opportunity to become the backstage interviewer at Alpha Omega. And then it all just sort of took off from there and, and this sort of weird, crazy ride. You said something interesting, and I want to go back to that because you've done some theater. And I'm sure that Mm -hmm. you learned a lot from being involved in theater. And how did those experiences maybe help you when it comes to the wrestling business? So there's a lot of people that if you stick a microphone in the hand and shove a camera in the face, they'll freeze up and won't know what to do. If you stick them in a a ring with a microphone, oh God, what do I do? Um, (laughs) But because I've been on stage for a long, long time, it just, it felt like, felt like I just knew what I was doing straight away. I'm a very outgoing person. So to get to a speak to a room of two to three hundred people i was i was all for that um you know i was i was having a great time and the thing it just gave me that confidence and that ability to pick up that microphone and just go ahead and make a fool out of myself because at first i, I had no clue as to what i was doing and i just went for it and i just gave it all full enthusiasm and then i've sort of refined it over the time but yeah it really gave me that 
it took away the nerves, which is the best thing I can ever ask for. Well, I'm sure, listen, when you're doing theater, it is definitely an experience like no others. And listen, I took drama in high school and I hated it. So I never liked being on stage. <laughs> So who would have guessed all these years later that I would be talking to you and you would have been a very successful person in theater. And listen, to be fair, though, I was I grew up in Brooklyn. So in Brooklyn, when you thought about being on theater and stage, it was as a kid growing up, you wanted to do other things. I mean, and wrestling was one of those things and sports was some of those other things. Yeah. So maybe now I would have looked at it differently. But at that time, it just it wasn't for me. It wasn't my time. But obviously, it is definitely our time to speak with you. But you said something else that's interesting and i want to go back to that because you've done some wrestling you're not like somebody else whether it's a justin roberts or a tony schimmel or david penzer where you just do ring announcing you just do backstage interview you've actually got in the ring and in fact, my friend, your debut match was actually against somebody that he can go in the ring himself in his own right. He's somebody that we could definitely see somewhere soon pretty big. And that's Will Carter. I mean, what a way to pick your debut match, my friend, to go up against Will Carter in the ring. I mean, so I got to ask you then, what are your memories of your debut match against Will Carter? And then what's it like being a wrestler from time to time? So after being at these shows and as I said earlier, and wrestlers, you know, throw me up against the wall in rage. And I thought, you know what? I need to know what I'm doing. I need to learn to, to protect myself. So I got in touch with KOW and went to their wrestling academy and got to work learning as much as I physically could there. And it was an incredible experience. And so my debut match, I got to wrestle Will for one of their KOW Academy showcases. And I loved every second of that match. Like to hear the crowd just react was something absolutely incredible. He has got a tank on him like something I've, like nothing I've ever seen. He can just keep going. He's so relentless. But to get in there and to throw that first move, to throw that first punch, to throw that to hit to slam someone that first time, there's very little experiences that I can equate to it. It was just something that was out of this world. Unfortunately, <laughs> I lost that that match. As well. um, he he is he is quite good. But being a wrestler on the odd occasion, it's a very weird it's a very weird position to be in because I don't wrestle all the time and I don't wrestle out of you know some people it's, it's in their blood that they're, they're born to do it. For me, it was a case of I wrestle when I have to wrestle, and I think that. Gives me that that fire to just keep getting up when I need to. You know, sometimes it's that's just physically not possible. You know, there's only so many times someone can put their foot in your face so hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's it but you know what while I'm conscious I'll get up every time and that's what the sporadic wrestling does I wrestle when I have to and if I have to I'll keep going you know while I'm conscious I'll keep going <laughs> well I'm not quite sure you're going to be exactly like a Shane McMahon who sporadically wrestles <laughs> but can hold his own and has done some crazy stuff in the ring I, I think it's more similar to back in the day in God Rest His Soul Bobby the Brain Heenan before his neck got hurt in the WWE <laughs> Beth, where he used to occasionally wrestle yeah. and we're talking about like it was like just comical stuff so i not to say that you would be comical stuff with you in the ring but it'd be very sporadic stuff very limited type of move but i think it gives you that understanding and knowledge of what it takes to be a wrestler and what those athletes go through because mm. i don't think people realize what a pro wrestler goes through to put himself or herself in the position to be as successful as they are so i want to make sure i recognize and acknowledge all of the many pro wrestlers out there who do that each and every night put their bodies on the line to give the fans what they want and to give that experience because I think it's unlike any other athlete whether it's a football player a baseball player a soccer player a tennis player or even a boxer because of the amount of damage that you have to incur and your bump card and all those different things so I want to make sure we acknowledge everybody so we're acknowledging you Ethan as well because technically you are a pro wrestler to some extent so obviously we'll give you a huge shout out on that and I wanted to ask you also something else because I know we've talked a lot of different of the Odyssey pro wrestlers because we've obviously had them on the show. But for a robot audience 
on the Sportinarium. I was also curious on, give us a little bit of a synopsis on some of the other wrestlers that have been announced that we haven't had on the show yet and what we can expect from them later this year. Yeah, so we've got Alexis Falcon, who is incredible in the ring. She's doing incredible things all up and down the UK. She's absolutely on fire right now. But she is someone that sits very well firmly in the hearts of the Morecambe wrestling fans. They absolutely adore her, and it's very plain to see why. She was the last Alpha Omega Wrestling Women's Champion, and the moment she won that belt, you've not heard a crowd react like it. You know, two, three hundred people sounded like 10,000. It was absolutely <laughs> insane. You've got a guy like Craig Collins, who has wrestled in Morecambe for a lot of years in back when it was paid promotions and further back XWA days. To me, Craig Collins is the best wrestler in the UK, bar none. He can absolutely go. I have stood in Morecambe and the best the, the best wrestling match I have ever watched in Craig Collins. He is that good. And he's just such an undiscovered gem. You know, the fact that more places on getting him in is an absolute, you know, it's their loss and it's our gain because we're going to get the absolute best Craig Collins and Craig Collins on his day is better than everyone else. Absolutely. And we've heard his name come up quite a bit on the show over the past several weeks, the war machine, Craig Collins. So I got a feeling that like the Kiss song, you are definitely going to have to be ready and feel a war machine because the war machine, Craig Collins, is definitely coming your way. So I want to make sure we recognize him and also Alexis as well, because she's somebody, again, I've seen a lot of her footage. I've seen her in the ring as well. And, and she's somebody, like I said, like everybody else here in Odyssey Pro Wrestling is going to have a big year and huge things are ahead as we are here on the Sports Report, the number one global sports show in his first interview since now he became the general manager for Odyssey Pro Wrestling. And that is Ethan Edwards. We are honored to have him here on the Sports Report, the number one global sports show on Sportinarium for a few more minutes to all the great things related to Odyssey Pro Wrestling and his career as well. He has been one of the best in the business when it comes as a backstage interviewer, when it also as a ring announcer. Obviously, he's our first ring announcer, so we've had tough shoes to live up to. We've had tough expectations to live up to, but we're certainly trying our best. And he's also even going in the ring a little bit. So while we're not sure he's one of the best wrestlers in the business, we can honestly say he's one of the best backstage interviewers in the business. He's one of the best ring announcers in the business. And he's also going to be the best general manager in the business here for Odyssey Pro Wrestling. And I am the host of the Sports Report, the Reverend Tom Bryce, and we are talking with Ethan Edwards. And Ethan, I got to ask you then, because you've been a ring announcer, and we've talked about that. I watched a number of your different times you've announced some of these wrestlers that we've talked about. I mean, what's it like to prepare as a ring announcer? Because we've had on a number of different broadcasters. We're friends with a few of them who've come on the show over the past two and a half years. But what's that preparation like when it comes to becoming a ring announcer and announcing the wrestlers because I think in some ways that's one of the most important things because everybody remembers the introduction you know that from theater everybody remembers the introduction everybody remembers the closing and you have two of the most important roles out there aside from being in the ring I mean what's it like to prepare to be a ring announcer so you've really got to know the people on the show First of all, you've got to know, I mean, the different different shows, you know, have different things that they like. Some people like the names and places and weights and heights and, and all that to be announced. Some places just want the name. And so you need to really understand the where you're working and what those fans will be expecting. You really need to know the wrestlers. You need to know all their information. You also need to make sure you drink a lot of water because <laughs> the, the amount of times I have lost my voice ring announcing, I genuinely cannot count at this point. But to me, that <laughs> truly just means I'm giving everything. If I've not lost my voice by the end of the show, it means that I've not given 100% to that show. You've got to just put some passion in. That's the other thing. You've got to find that place where the fans first meeting of these of who these people are is when you're announcing them so you've really got to get that passion over to the fans as well oh listen we watched you my friend we know that you have the passion we know that you have the drive and i'm sure every show you lose your voice because you have good purpose because you got so many great wrestlers to introduce and obviously that's a tremendous job and it's a tough job and i think it's a lot tougher than people realize so we know that you definitely have the passion and energy and desire for it. And I wanted to talk with you on, was a little personal that you were involved in that was really important, I think, to the community as a whole. And talk about the fact on why you were involved in a project 
for Ticket Mealster with fan sharing. What was that about? How did you get involved in that? And talk about that experience. So the pandemic hasn't been kind to to a lot of people, not just from a from a health standpoint, from the ability to live standpoint. I'm a parent. I've got two little girls. They are absolutely everything to me. And when the schools closed here in the UK during our lockdown, you know, it soon became apparent that parents needed this extra support for school meals, like for lunches. A lot of children get their hot meal of the day at school, which is, as a parent, it's a very heartbreaking thing to sort of sit there and realize, oh, hang on, these kids are all at home and they're they're not really, really getting anything. It was really inspired by the work that the footballer Marcus Rashford was doing to raise money. And I just sort of felt I couldn't sit there and not do anything. And so I was sort of thinking about how I could help and do something to make even a, a little bit of difference. So I came up with the with the idea for the ticket mealster because we were in a position where you know people weren't able to go out to wrestling shows or to football matches or to theatre shows or to just any sort of live event. I sort of thought, well, why not donate that money? Why not donate the money that you would pay for a ticket? to feeding a child. To me, it just felt like a, a sort of no-brainer. So we set the Ticket Mealster up and the amount of people that got on board with it was was absolutely incredible. I think in the end, we managed to raise enough money to feed 400 meals to children, which as a parent, just sort of, I could never imagine being in that situation to help just a little bit. It's the least I could do. A rising tide lifts all boats and Ethan Edwards literally was that rising tide for hundreds and hundreds of boats for families because they were able to have a meal that they may not otherwise have had. So we've always used that expression here over the past two years about a rising tide lifts all boats. And my friend, you literally have been that rising tide that has lifted all boats. And I wanted to ask you about a name that we brought up here on the show with a number of the different wrestlers, because I know he's been important in a lot of different ways that maybe we don't get to see here and certainly a worldwide audience listening here on Sport and Area may not understand, but talk about why Chris Brooker is so important. Um, so Chris Brooker is a guy that I haven't had a great deal of dealing with. So he's someone that over time I, I hope to meet. However, the work that he's done at, at Future Shock Pro Wrestling in Manchester is huge. The Future Shock Academy is absolutely massive. It is producing some of the best pro wrestlers in the country right now. But it's not just about the in-ring work. What Chris is doing is he's he's sitting down with these one-to-one sessions with wrestlers and truly helping them find their voice, which you don't get in a lot of wrestling schools a lot of wrestling schools will teach you the fundamentals you know where to put your feet where to put your arms and how to take a bump and and stuff like that but to truly connect with a crowd a lot of people learn as they go so to have someone like chris who's willing to take his time and energy and and help people find that voice and help find that that way to connect with with the fans it's an absolute great thing to see absolutely and huge shout out to him and i know that he was a part of that big zoom call that a number of the different stars at odyssey pro wrestling were on with lance storm the legendary Lance Storm. So huge shout out to Chris Rooker. And I got to ask you this question before we get into closing thoughts and one or two moments that stand out most. And we'll also ask you about a recap on KOW as well. But since you are the general manager, I got to ask you this question because I know that you've seen social media over the past week and it's been this back and forth with RPD, RP Davis and the guiding light, Isaiah Quinn. And I I know that that has been the talk of the wrestling world and especially the Odyssey Pro Wrestling Universe in this back and forth between RPD and the Guiding Light. I mean, you're the general manager now, so you're essentially one of the top guys at at the helm here for Odyssey Pro Wrestling. So what did you make of this whole back and forth that started here on this show, by the way, when it came to RPD and the Guiding Light (laughs) Isaiah Quinn? I mean, first thing it shows to me is the the passion that the two guys show to want to be the best. They're both going to go about it in very, very different ways. And I think that's what we're seeing sort of unfold on Twitter and, and online. You know, they don't like each other. It's, it's it's plain and obvious to see that right away. Um, but you know what? That's going to make for something exciting for the fans. When you sit down and you watch a match and you see that these people really don't like each other, the anticipation for that match is going to build and build and build. And you know what? I'm just going to sit back as a fan and just enjoy when those two finally meet because two balls meeting head on is going to be so interesting to see. <laughs> 
Boy, we cannot wait for that. We cannot wait to see what happens between these two. And obviously, they've been two of our most important guests in show history. So we definitely love them both here on the show. So obviously, we're looking forward to the future, regardless of what happens between RPD and The Guiding Light, Isaiah Quinn. And also, huge shout outs to both of them. And listen, we take some of that credit here. So obviously, we knew that they didn't like each other previously, but I think in some ways, you can blame myself, Sportinarium, and the Sports Report because I think they like each other even less since the last week. But I wanted to ask you because obviously, most importantly, you were also the general manager and ring announcer and backstage interview. You were literally a jack of all trades at KOW. We've talked a lot about KOW over the past several weeks. So before I get your closing thoughts and one or two memories that stand out most in your career so far, I wanted to ask you, talk about KOW and what made KOW so special. KOW, what what makes KW so special is they very similar to Morkham in the promotion that's there for the fans. They tell stories that are relevant to the fans. They tell long stories that you're so invested in that that's what makes you need to come back to the next show. They Not only do they have these great, great stars of the show, people like Craig Collins, people like Thug Life Taylor West, people like Ryan Grayson, you know, King Ryan Grayson, but they've also got people that they've trained in-house and brought up themselves, their own homegrown talent. So people like Rick Marcus, people like 2-Bit, people like Will Carter, but they've also got Lucas Neon, they've also got Sheriff Steele. They've got the people that people really invest in, and that's something to really be admired. Ladies and gentlemen, KLW was great, but I got a very, very good feeling that Odyssey Pro Wrestling is going to be just as great and some because of our guest here to kick things off on the sports report today and this weekend is the general manager for OP Dub, OP Dub, OP Dub, Odyssey Pro Wrestling. That is Ethan Edwards, and he literally has done it all in the wrestling business. And we are looking forward to what the general manager has in store for us when it comes to Odyssey Pro Wrestling here over the next several months. And before I get your closing thoughts here, Ethan, it's obviously been a tremendous honor to speak with you and talk about all the great things that you've done in wrestling career. And also, in addition to that, what you're going to do in your wrestling career, especially with Odyssey Pro Wrestling. I know you've been involved in a lot of things over your career, but I got to ask you anyway, in if there's one or two moments that stand out most in your wrestling career so far. So the first one would be the first time I ever attempted to get into a ring in Morecambe. It was during the Golden Champs Rumble. So very much like the Royal Rumble, the winner would get a, a title shot. But with this one, they would be able to cash it in anytime, anywhere. And I thought, you know what? Anyone can do it. I'd been training. I'd been working hard. I thought, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna declare myself in this match. Now, it turns out that declaring yourself in a match doesn't automatically put you in the match. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> when uh, when one of the guys didn't show up during his entrance, I thought, you know what, this is my opportunity. And any good wrestler always always has their gear with them ready. I just happened to be wearing my gear underneath my clothes I was wearing for ring announcing. So as I jumped up on the stage and started to throw these clothes off ready to get into the ring, I got attacked from behind by a very, very tough man named Andre Decker, who literally knocked me for six. <laughs> um, at which point I then, you know, after I sort of recovered, I thought, no, you know what? I've already, I'm here. I'm, I'm this close to the ring. I tried to get in the ring and Jack Barron attacked me. I mean, one that I'd had a bit of issues with during my time as a, uh, as a backstage interviewer. And then I sort of, you know, I managed to recover from that and then as I was getting up and I was about to enter the ring the former Alpha Omega wrestling champion King Ryan Grayson decided to come to the ring and at which point kicked the soul out of my body um <laughs> That and then I managed to recover from that and sort of crawl and drag my way into the ring. And that moment, you know, when the fans willed me up and I got in the ring and I I got to wrestle in front of my hometown crowd, in front of my family, in front of my friends. I'll treasure that forever. I really will. And then to have my one of my wrestling parents, so to speak, Sheriff Steele, help me eliminate King Ryan Grayson. That was pretty great. <laughs> And to be able to finally shut Jack Barron up and eliminate him, that was pretty great. What I do regret is after I... After I eliminated Jack, I was so excited because of all the sort of weeks and months of torment. I was so excited. I climbed up onto the second rope and I celebrated with the fans and they celebrated along with me. And then at that point, someone tipped me out of the ring. (laughs) (laughs) 
that was that's, pretty incredible. That's pretty cool, man. Listen, that's definitely almost like a WrestleMania moment. It's a bucket list moment. And I got to <laughs> ask you because Sheriff Steele now has come up a couple of times. We know that he has a history with Rick and a number of different of the wrestlers that we've spoken with at Odyssey. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention him. But talk about Sheriff Steele and why he was so important to KOW. He was so important because he was the heart of KOW for for, for a good long time he brought the fun that's what wrestling is it's fun and wrestling can be can be silly and it can be stupid um it can be funny you know and and he during his time as a member of my favorite tag team from KOW which was uh, Royal Justice I was excited for his match every show KOW were forced to create a tag team division because of Royal Justice because of Sheriff Steele and because of Brian Grayson who was his tag team partner at the time the fans made them create a tag team division for those two that's flourishing now he has done everything you can I think I think I don't know if he's won the showcase trophy but other than that he's truly done everything you can do in KOW he's been the heavyweight champion he's been the tag team champion wait created the tag team titles he, <laughs> he won the vertical ladder match which you know is, is truly a very inspiring thing to do he's more than that he was someone that for myself during his time in in alpha omega wrestling he would do this thing where he he dressed up as old 80s wrestlers um <laughs> so he did he did he did one where he um <laughs> he came out as the as the ultimate warrior once and <laughs> um, he did the full ultimate warrior, ultimate warrior entrance and in doing the Ultimate Warrior entrance, he pulled his calf muscle. <laughs> so <laughs> the following the following show, he came out as the Undertaker and just did that slow walk to the ring. <laughs> but speaking of like those moments in wrestling, the night that he and his tag partner in Morecambe, Matt Fox, the night they won the tag team titles, they let me be a part of that. So uh, we've talked about like issues that I've had backstage as a ring announcer, but uh, as a, a backstage interviewer. But the other beauty of that is there's people like Sheriff Steele and there's people like Matt Fox that just want to help people. And they wanted to help me. You know, they really brought me out of my shell. I was able to really get more comfortable working with guys like them. And so when they came out as the Legion of Doom on that final show for Alpha Omega, and won the tag team titles they let me dress up as Paul Ellering and and, and get in on their on their thing <laughs> um, it was it was the thing was that the costumes were always a little bit naff so I came out in a in a swimming cap and sunglasses and that was my best Paul Ellering impression <laughs> so, you know I think I think that's why Sherry Steele is so important is he truly wants to help everyone around him and he truly just wants to bring the fun back to wrestling ladies and gentlemen I got a very good feeling that Ethan Edwards is going to do just the same when it comes to helping the many wrestlers in Odyssey pro wrestling and that's why for us we felt like it was what a rush to have on the sports report to kick things off today in his first interview since he's become the general manager for op dub op dub op dub odyssey pro wrestling that's ethan edwards who has done many many things in the wrestling business is going to do many many things on behalf of odyssey pro wrestling and that's why a rising tide lifts all boats and ethan edwards is definitely going to be that rising tide that is going to lift Odyssey Pro Wrestling here. And for you, my friend, I want to give you the floor. It's been a tremendous honor to speak with you. And anything we can do to help Odyssey Pro Wrestling, we will always do that anytime, anything you guys ever need. And for a worldwide audience, I also want you to plug where all of our listeners can get in touch and keep up to date with all the great things that you do. So please plug your Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, any other social media. Also plug all of the great social media at Odyssey pro wrestling is on because there's a good chance we're going to appear on some of that obviously especially when it comes to twitter facebook instagram so <laughs> also please plug some of that as well so we can keep up to date and also for a world audience anything you want to share anything you want to share on behalf of odyssey pro wrestling i want to give you the floor and, and i can't thank you enough for the opportunity so my friend the floor is yours please plug all of your social media all of your odyssey pro wrestling social media and anything you want to say the floor is yours yeah thank you very much so where to find me if you want to get in touch with me on Facebook it's Ethan Edwards Wrestling on Twitter and on Instagram 
it's uh, at Ethan Announces. To find Odyssey Pro Wrestling on Twitter, it's OPW underscore UK. On Instagram, it's Odyssey Pro Wrestling, or one word. And on Facebook, it's Odyssey Pro Wrestling as well. So Odyssey Pro Wrestling, find us on social media. We announce a new wrestler every Friday, and that's where you can keep up to date with when we'll finally be able to announce a show when all the restrictions are lifted. And that's about it, really. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot wait to set sail with Odyssey Pro Wrestling. And we couldn't think of a better way than to get ready to set sail with Odyssey Pro Wrestling is the general manager of Odyssey Pro Wrestling in his first interview since taking over the reins as general manager. And that is Ethan Edwards. And Ethan Edwards' work is as good as anybody's you're going to find when it comes to ring announcing, backstage interviewing, and a wrestling mind and his experience in the places as the likes of ALW, TWA, LWF, and most importantly, he's going to use all of those experiences to build a better and bigger roster with Odyssey Pro Wrestling. And we cannot wait to set sail and talk about all the great things that Odyssey Pro Wrestling has to offer. For you, my friend, it's a tremendous honor. Congratulations on being general manager of Odyssey Pro Wrestling. I know you've got a tough job. You've got a lot of wrestlers to deal with. you got to keep everybody happy and keep everything in order. But we know that you're the right man for the job. We know that you're going to do all the things that are needed to be done to make sure Odyssey Pro Wrestling is up there with the likes of the WWE and NXT and MLW and TNA Impact and AEW. So congratulations once again. I can't thank you enough. Anytime you want to come on, you're always welcome. And I'm sure we'll have you on in the near and distant future. And looking forward to speaking with you soon. And can't thank you enough. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. As we're here on the Sports Report, the number one global sports show with the general manager for OP Dub, OP Dub, OP Dub, Odyssey Pro Wrestling, and that's Ethan Edwards, as I am the host of the Sports Report, the Reverend Tom Bryson. When I just get done with Odyssey Pro Wrestling, because if you didn't hear those clips on social media between RPD, RPD, and the Dining Lounge, Isaiah. Quinn. We're going to play him right now because we want even more people to hear the back and forth between RPD and the guiding light Isaiah Quinn. So stay tuned for that. Then right after that, we're going to play some brand new music from three-time Sports Report alum Anthony Finkel and his band Soul Menta. So you're going to definitely feel euphoric when you hear that. So stay tuned for that. And also in addition to Anthony Finkel's music, we're going to hear from huge wrestling fan, the legendary Joe Dell of the million streamed band Sleepy Hollow, his music. So if you like it hard, you like it heavy, you like it loud, you've got Anthony Finkel's music, Big Fink, and you got Joe Dell from Sleepy Hollow. So stay tuned for all of that. And most importantly, stay tuned for the clips of the R.P. Davis and the Isaiah Quinn, the Guiding Lights feud, which we know we have not heard the last of, and only in Odyssey Pro Wrestling, and only in Sportarium, but on the Sports Report, as I I am the host of the Sports Report, Little Reverend Tom Bryce, and we're here on Sportinarium, the number one global radio station.